Give it up for Mike Baldwin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to my thing at the place. We got, we spent a lot of money on on the set design, found some investors, so. Hell yeah, comedy special, woo. Netflix, baby. I'm gonna send it to them. See if they'll watch it. All right, hey. They got food here if you want food. I'm hungry, but I don't like to eat before I do comedy. It makes my brain slower than it normally is. Makes my belly make noises that sound like they end in a question mark. (laughs) Brr. Oh, no. I don't have to poop, but... I could. (laughs) If we were about to go on a road trip or something, I'd be like, yeah, maybe I should try. (laughs) I'll probably be all right. No, I've been working on myself in the last two years. I'm down 160 pounds, so things are going pretty good. Yep. That's what I like about traveling around and doing comedy in front of strangers and stuff, because you guys don't know whether I'm just making that shit up or not. And and I am. I'm not. I'm fatter than I've been in my whole life, but it's no big deal. I'm sure it'll work itself out. I'll grow into it, probably. I think that's how it works. I always, I know I need to like eat right and exercise, but I just pick easier shit. I'm like, nah, it's this recliner. I just sit in the recliner too much. If I didn't have that, then I would get shit done. So then I like donate my recliner and then I'm just being a piece of shit on the floor. I'm like, all right. Turns out it was not the recliner. I know that now. I get like free food from the places I work and so I'll take it back to my hotel room and sit in my underwear on my hotel bed at two o'clock in the morning and eat dinner. That's pretty healthy, huh? (laughs) And I usually get like silverware food, but then I forget to get silverware. So that makes me feel extra fat. (laughs) Just eating with my hands in my underwear. (laughs) I'm like, it's spaghetti time. I've eaten mashed potatoes with, like, a chicken bone. (laughs) Once the chicken's gone, it's just a eating stick. (laughs) I eat my Caesar salad like it's a bowl of popcorn. (laughs) Got one right there. Spread peanut butter with my room key. (laughs) It's hard to exercise and stuff, because, like, the clothes that I wear to go to the gym are the same clothes that I wear to just sit around and be a piece of shit all day. (laughs) So I'll get, like, half motivated, you know? I'm like, all right, got my workout clothes on. Pretty comfortable. Let's fucking sit down. <laughs> Kick these shoes off. Pretty much just wearing pajamas now, so... Might as well watch 11 episodes of something. <laughs> I think about going to the gym the same way I think about suicide. I'm like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Today just doesn't feel like the right... (laughs) I know I should. (laughs) No, I'm just joking. Everything's fine. Don't worry. I'm not suicidal, but I'm not whatever the opposite of that word is. I'm in the middle somewhere, I think. 
Now, I lost a bunch of weight doing the low carb thing, but then I gained it all back because carbs are good. <laughs> they are, they're like my favorite. They're addictive though, like you eat some, it makes you want to eat more, you know? It's like a drug. Like science-wise, like the same parts of your brain light up and stuff. That's why you can eat a big shitty meal and be like, you know what, pie does sound good. <laughs> it's not because your body needs pie. It's because your brain's going, yeah! I want to feel like this forever. It's like heroin or crack or something. I assume. <laughs> I've never done either of them, but I'm pretty sure they're probably awesome. That's why they're so bad, because they're so awesome. People don't smoke crack and be like, it was all right. People smoke crack and they're like, hell yeah, crack. <laughs> and I'm not trying to get you to try it or anything, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if you did, I bet you'd love it. More than you love your own family. But no, don't do it. Unless you got a terrible family, and then I see no reason why you wouldn't want to. I know that carbs are a drug. I can tell when I try to quit them, you know? That first week of low carb is like detox. Because it's like no bread, no pasta, no potatoes. So that whole first week, I'm like, so what the fuck am I supposed to eat? <laughs> Can't have pasta potato sandwiches no more. <laughs> what else even is there? I would still go to McDonald's all the time, no matter what I was doing. If I was doing low carb and I go to McDonald's, I would just be like, meat. Just bags of burger patties, please. And chicken nuggets with the skin ripped off. I'm being healthy, so. That's my breakfast. I did calorie counting for a while, that works. Anything works if you do it. That's how they get you, you know? I'll see a video or something and I'll be like, oh, that would work. Oh, but you gotta do it. Mm. Need something easier than that. It's like a pill or something. If you're counting calories and you go to McDonald's, then you gotta just get less food, you know? I would just be like, happy meal, please. <laughs> For a boy. <laughs> right, because you get different toys depending on... I would look at what toy I got, and talk to my invisible son. You've already got, he's already got this toy. <laughs> Give me the box, I'll pick one. <laughs> I would do a cheat day once a week on Sunday where I could just eat whatever I wanted all day. Well, it started once a week on Sunday. <laughs> they got closer together and longer as the time went on. One week I was like, hey, but tomorrow's President's Day, so <laughs> two day cheat day. And then I was like, eh, cheat week, but then we're back on it. And then I was like, cheat October. And then I'm like, eh, but Thanksgiving will be here soon, so cheat season. And then I'm just hooked again, you know? And I'm like, eh, cheat decade. Just the rest of the 2020s, I'll cheat. January 1st, 2030, though. Shit is gonna change. <laughs> uh, I just, I need to lose weight because of uh, my wiener, <laughs> right? Because you can't change how big your wiener is. It's just that big. All you can do is change what size your body around your wiener is. <laughs> and like the fatter a guy gets, the smaller his wiener seems. <laughs> Because fat eats it. 
It just stays the exact same, but now there's all this extra stuff around it, you know? It's like, imagine like your cat sitting on your couch, and then imagine your cat like pushed down between the couch cushions. <laughs> Like, you can still see that it's a cat. <laughs> G- girls are like, is he okay? I'm like, he's fine. He'll come out when he's ready. When girls get fatter, their boobs get bigger, their butts get bigger. Dudes are like, hey. Can you imagine that, guys? If we got fatter and it made our wieners bigger? Girls would watch like my 600 pound life and be like, oh yeah. But, nope. I mean, it's, it's fine. I'm not embarrassed, you know, but I'm not proud. It's like right in the middle of those two words, I think. A girl's never looked at it and been like, what? But a girl's never looked at it and been like, what? So, you know, girls just look at it and they're like, all right. A girl has never said, oh my God, in either direction. So, she's just like, okie dokie. Right? That's average, I think. I don't know. You know, there's like, there's that baseball bat game where like a person will grab a baseball bat and then the other person grabs it and you keep like, yeah, you can't do that. You can grab it once, but that second hand won't go all the way. You can cap it still. You can still... You can still win the game. I am single. I, uh... I don't understand why that's humorous, but... Uh, I like being single, you know? I mean, I don't like it while I'm single, but every other time, being single's the best. My brain just wants the opposite of whatever situation it's currently in. I think that's how I am, you know? When I'm single, I'm like, I just want somebody to like come home and have dinner together and watch TV and stuff. And then I get a girlfriend and she's like, come home, we'll have dinner and watch TV. And I'm like, I don't wanna fucking do that. (laughs) I just wanna live my life. (laughs) When I'm single, I'm like, I just wanna hold someone while I'm sleeping. And then I get that, and I'm like, it's fucking hot! They <laughs> always touch me and shit. God! <laughs> There's a lot of opposites when it comes to love and whatnot. Sex is like that. Like, all the sex I've had in my entire life has either been me trying not to finish, or me just trying to finish. <laughs> But it's always the opposite of what the girl wished I was doing. If she's like, you're amazing, don't stop. I'm like, ugh. Right? But if she's like, are you gonna come? I'm like, not now. Not now that you said that, you just reset the clock. I was getting close. Now I feel like you're not even enjoying yourself. You're just waiting for it to be over, so. 
let's just go make a sandwich. <laughs> Condoms are the same. Like, if I'm going to sleep with a girl for the first time, whatever she says about me wearing a condom, I want to do the opposite. <laughs> Right? If she's like, you have to put a condom on. I'm like, well, it sounds like you say that to everybody, so I'm probably fine. <laughs> right? That makes sense, kinda. But if she's like, just stick it in, I'm like, I'm gonna put a condom on. That's funny. Thank you. There's a lot of diseases out there. I'm not trying to collect the whole set. <laughs> I have plenty, thank you. <laughs> uh, there's like statistics and stuff on the internet about STDs, but you don't know what's true and what's not on the internet, you know? I mean, I've slept with like seven or eight girls that had herpes and I only got it from one of them. <laughs> The, the first one, yep. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's the only joke that I have that I like to clarify, that I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> I just want it to go away. <laughs> I do the dating apps and stuff. All of them. I see all the same girls on all the different apps. I'm like, hey, it's me again. You want to talk here? Still no? Okay. Dating apps just ruined dating for me. Like when I first started doing them, like I would match with a girl and we would chat a little bit and then we would meet at like a bar or restaurant and like get to know each other and that led to a few longer term relationships, you know? But well, then somewhere along the line, like I matched with a girl and I was like, do you want to go to a restaurant and get to know each other? And she's like, do you want me to just come over and watch TV? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then she came over and then we had sex on my couch and it was awesome. And then I matched with another girl later and she's like, do you want to meet at a restaurant and get to know each other? And I was like, you want to just come over and watch TV? <laughs> and she was like, no. And I was like, well, then I'm not interested. <laughs> So I'm missing out on like all these potentially awesome girls because they're like afraid of being murdered or whatever. <laughs> Which statistically, I mean, I would probably have a better chance of getting away with it if we were out in public somewhere. Because if you're just at my place, they're going to like look at your phone and stuff and be like, well, the location says you were here and nobody else was here except him. So he's suspect number one, you know. But if we're just out in public somewhere, I can just fucking just chink and just run into the crowd. And be like, I didn't see nothing. I'm just saying, you know, statistically, you're safer just coming over. I'm going to add laughs to that one. I said it good, but you guys didn't. You didn't deliver your line the way that you were supposed to. <laughs> Does everybody have their scripts in front of them? All right. <laughs> your line is, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, what else? I went on a date with a girl, and she was wearing high heels, and she got drunk, and she fell down. <laughs> Five-second rule. A lot of people just laugh at that joke because it's silly, but it's actually an oral sex joke. <laughs> in, case, in case you didn't understand. I took a shower before I got here today. It was mostly a butthole shower, but everything else could have gone another day. I was like, no, you never know. I don't want that to be the thing she talks to her friends about. That's, what's, that's one of those things you can't talk about when you're on a date or whatever. Like, I don't want to do anything with a girl unless she has showered more recently 
than she pooped, but you can't, <laughs> you can't just be like, let me ask you a question. <laughs> it's just one of those things that you gotta like be lucky on and be like, hell yeah, all right. <laughs> or you're like, oh no. <laughs> That's why people think that people like doing it in the shower, but they don't. They're like, well, just why don't you come in here for a minute? Let's do some sexy butthole things. There you go. Use the soap. It's hot. That's hot to me. All right. I don't know. I think the volume of cum should be more respected. Because it's different depending on what you've been doing, you know? If you jerk off today, then you come tonight, it's gonna be less than if you didn't jerk off today. And I feel like girls should be like, good job. <laughs> I mean, they're not, I don't know. It's not fair. Like that should be a pickup line, you know? I'm like, hey girl. Oh, like, I've been at my sister's for the last week, haven't touched myself at all. <laughs> I like when I watch porn, it, when a girl in porn looks like a girl that I know in real life. That's always cool. But I don't like it when a girl that I know in real life does porn. <laughs> That's weird, I can't talk to her like a normal person after that. She's like, hey, Mike, how's comedy going? And I'm like, <laughs> your butthole gets really big. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make it do that? It's amazing. I think I'm just too picky, you know? I mean, not when it comes to just sleeping with girls. I'll fuck any of you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but... A, a good amount of you, though. <laughs> There's a difference, though, between just, like, hooking up with somebody and, like, wanting to be with somebody, you know? And I always just find something that I'm like, mm-mm, not that forever. <laughs> I was dating this one girl for a while, and everything was awesome, and we were sitting on her couch watching TV, and her cat was there, and it was meowing at us, and it was super annoying, and she was like, please shut the fuck up! And just her look of like, grr, and I was like, nah, she's gonna look at me like that one day. <laughs> I don't ever wanna see that face again over something as big as a cat's meow. But you don't know until it happens, and you're like, that, for sure. And then my friends are like, what do you look for in a woman? And I'm like, well, she can't look at cats wrong. <laughs> I never knew how important that was, but it is. I'm sober um, from alcohol. I'm high as fuck, but those are different. I really did quit drinking on May 18th. It was eight years that I haven't drank booze or anything, so that's cool. Yeah, that's whatever. <laughs> Most of you are drinking. I don't know how much I need your support, but you're just a room of drunks. Yeah! You fucking did it, buddy. Cool, thank you. Nah, I had to quit, man. I was too good. I was too good at it. Everybody always got jealous of how awesome it made me. So I quit for their benefit. Nah, I just blacked out all the time and I would do dumb shit and then everybody would hate me the next day and they'd be like, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I'd be like, I am, but why? Like, I feel the feeling, I just don't know the details. I got busted for drunk driving twice. That sucked, both times. The first time really wasn't that bad, because I was drunk. <laughs> I didn't care, I was like, take me to jail, I don't give a shit. The cop was like, yeah, no, that's where we're going. <laughs> I was like, that's my favorite place. So good. Thank you, because I love it there. I love the food there. I'm going to eat a ham sandwich and an apple, and it's going to cost me $19,000. <laughs> I 
It's that level of drunk where you're proud of shit. <laughs> It's the same level of drunk where you think having your eyebrows up means that your eyes are still open. What? <laughs> I'm up. I'm up, dude. Get in. I'm driving. My friends are like, you can't even walk. I'm like, I don't need to walk to drive. <laughs> I hope you're capturing that on the recording. The special's gonna be nine hours long. <laughs> Eight of them are gonna just be her going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you all the time you need. It's no big deal. Now he's got me with the sobriety tests and stuff, you know? They're sneaky about it. A lot of those tests aren't even a real test. They just know that if you try the thing, that you're probably drunk. Right? So they'll be like, how many cartwheels can you do? And if you're sober, you're like, cartwheels? Why? But when you're drunk, you're like, start counting! <laughs> sitting in the back of his car. What was wrong with him? I was straight up and down. What was wrong with the way I crab walked around your car? He, he's like, I didn't even ask you to do that. I just looked down and you were crab walking. I had a cop one time, he just goes, can you touch both wrists together behind your back? And I was like, yeah, and then he just handcuffed me. I was like, oh shit, I thought that was a test. He got me. The second one I got, I got from a canine cop. And that's like dog cop, you know? He had, there was a human cop with him, driving. And like, doing a majority of the talking and stuff. Like, it's weird, like if I'm driving, if a cop pulls me over and searches my car and finds drugs in it, uh, and he does. Uh, he talks to me the same way that I would talk to my dog if I got home and saw that he shit on the floor. I'd be like, come over here, buddy. You want to tell me what the fuck that right there? Who's that? Is that where we do that? That is no. <laughs> I'm like, rub my nose in it. <laughs> One final time. <laughs> All right. How's that part? Oh, the your funny girl got fucking booted, I guess, huh? <laughs> that was my friend, actually, but that's all right. <laughs> are you guys, are you political people? I'm not. I'm high a lot. <laughs> so they've legalized weed, and I'm just like, we're good. <laughs> Politics are covered. Now, the weirdest thing about politics for me is like the people that are in it want to be in it, you know? They're like chasing that power or money or whatever. I don't think you should want to do it. I think it should be like jury duty. <laughs> right? Like I'm just at my job at McDonald's and a guy in a black suit walks in like, are you Mike Baldwin? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're senator for the next year. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
paint. And I'm like, ah, fuck. I don't want to do that. But then you'd be mad about it at least, you know? You'd get in there like, all right, what do I got to fucking do? Fix potholes. That's what I would do. If I was running for anything anywhere, that would be my campaign, you know? Just like, potholes suck, huh? People are like, yeah, they fucking do. I'd be like, all right, let's fill them up. I don't know why that's hard. I know there's a guy with a truckload of pothole filler upper shit. What does that guy do all day? Wants to get his ass out there. <laughs> that was the political portion. <laughs> Thanks. I know, I put a lot of research into it. I'm starting, my hairline's receding a little bit. Why, I know, you probably can't even tell. I'm just self-conscious about it. Now I'm growing it out, man. I'm growing out my bang. I got one strong one left right there. I'm gonna grow it long. And then people will say stuff to me and I'll be like, what? I'll do this shit all the time. I don't know, I like doing this. I like doing comedy and stuff. I just be dumb and get money. It's awesome, it's better than having like real jobs. You guys have those and they suck. You gotta wake up and go to them and stuff and do them. That all sounds terrible. I started working when I was like 14 though. I did telemarketing because they were dumb and would hire 14 year olds. I worked at a place called Swan Lake Memorial Gardens, which was like a cemetery. They just gave us a list of old people and their phone numbers and we were supposed to call them and be like, have you made your afterlife preparations yet? But we were like 14, so we'd just be like, you're gonna die! And they'd be like, who is this? It's the Grim Reaper. I worked at a place called A&W Hot Dogs and more. The more was chicken sandwiches, but you were supposed to be 16 to work there, but I was only 14, so I just lied and wrote 16, and nobody ever checked. So when I actually turned 16, they thought I turned 18, and they let me be assistant manager. It was awesome. I hired my friends and stuff. And sales went down. We just sat in the back and smoked weed all the time, and we'd forget to do important stuff. And a guy would walk up and be like, hot dog, please. And we'd look at each other like, oh, we knew we forgot something. We forgot to cook the hot dogs. We just wouldn't do shit if we didn't feel like it. There were a few days that we were just like, drinks only, nothing works. I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners door to door for a while. You know what those are? All right. I got really good at being like, no, I won't leave your house yet. <laughs> you agreed to a two hour demonstration, now sit back down. <laughs> they are cool machines, they sold me on it. I still have mine, I'll never buy a normal vacuum cleaner ever again. Do we have the, yeah, just grab it and bring it up here. I'm kidding, wouldn't that be dumb if I did that? <laughs> Is he gonna try to sell us one? <laughs> they sell themselves. I was a waiter for a while, that was a fun job. I was good at being a waiter. Well, I was good at like talking to people and stuff. I was never good at like, bring me what I ordered, you know, but it's like <laughs> minor detail. The best part about being a waiter is when new people come in to be waiters, because you get to train them, and they don't know how to be waiters, so you can just train them wrong. <laughs> That's what we did. We spent all of our free time telling the new guy that he had to do stuff that he didn't really have to do. We'd be like, go empty the water out of the coffee machine. But the coffee machines were connected to like water pipes in the wall, <laughs> so it's just infinite water. <laughs> He's like, how much is in here? All right. We're like, probably one more bucket, dude. 
You're doing good. I convinced one guy that the credit card machine was voice activated. So he had to say what kind of card it was as he swiped it or it wouldn't work. He believed me, he did it for months. Visa. Our favorite thing, there was a McDonald's across the street, so we would walk up to a new guy and be like, McDonald's called, and they ran out of french fries. And then we'd make that guy get a bucket and fill it up with potatoes and walk it over <laughs> to McDonald's. And that's all. We would just wait a few minutes, and he'd come back like, nobody even knew what I was talking about. It was like one of those funny things that we didn't get to witness being funny, but we would sit at work like, I bet it's funny over there. <laughs> we did that to every new person. Like somebody would just fill out an application and we'd be like, just hire them, just long enough for potatoes. <laughs> one time we sent a girl over there with a bucket of potatoes and she came back with no bucket and no potatoes. She's like, all right, what do I do now? <laughs> and we're like, what the fuck happened? We have to know. It was just a new girl at McDonald's also. <laughs> Nobody understood the joke. She was just like, here's your potatoes. And she's like, all right, thank you. <laughs> we made her go back and get them. <laughs> we did. We're like, we fucking need those. Quit messing around. I got a weighted blanket. You know what those are? It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you don't know, it's a blanket. It's heavy. That's all you need to know. But they got, I got it because I toss and turn, you know? I'm a tosser and turner. And they say it's supposed to help weigh you down and keep you still while you sleep. And all it did for me is make me toss and turn stronger. <laughs> I used to just innocently be like, bloop. And now I gotta be like, Hurr! I'm really, I'm building whatever this muscle is here that you flip with, your flip muscle. The, the human body is 98.6 degrees. So you would think that if it was 98.6 degrees outside, you'd just be like, fuck yes. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, that's not really a joke. I just wonder why that's not how it is. Have you ever, have you ever physically reacted to somebody's ugliness? I did that before, I think about it all the time. I feel like a dick. I was in the left-hand lane, it was a red light. I was in the turn lane and there was a lady in the car next to me and something was wrong. Just the proportions were off, I don't know, but I just glanced over at her and I saw her and I went, ooh. And, and she totally saw me do it and I, I think about it like three times a week, I'm a dick. I did the same thing to a girl's boobs once. I didn't mean to, she just had a bunch of kids and they were just wrecked or something, I don't know, but. She took her bra off and I went, ooh. And I think about that the exact same amount that I think about the lady, because every time I remember one, I'm like, boop, and that other time. I hate when people are assholes on their birthday. That always bothers me. When somebody's a dick and you call them out and they're like, it's my birthday. Like, I don't like it. I think we should either do away with that completely or we should take it to the absolute extreme. Like, I want to murder a man. And then the cops show up and they're like, freeze! And I'm like, ah! It's my birthday. And they're like, get the hell out of here, birthday boy. I think it's almost over pretty, oh, nope. <laughs> it's not very much longer, I promise. 
Now, if you, if you don't know who I am and you're watching this, look me up on the internet. My name is Mike Baldwin. It's like Alec Baldwin, except it's Mike. <laughs> That's how I remember. <laughs> if you forget, just remember Mike, like Mike, and then bald, and then when? <laughs> if you just search Mike Baldwin, then my website is the first thing that pops up. But if you try to just go to MikeBaldwin.com, that's not me. There's another guy named Mike Baldwin. He's a real estate agent in Maryland. <laughs> and he doesn't reply to emails. Because <laughs> he's a dick. <laughs> you would think he would write me back. They're all short emails. They're just like, me too, dude. But you can go to MikeIsFunny.com if you think I'm funny. And if you don't think I'm funny, it, it's the same. <laughs> I was going to get MikeIsNotAllThatFunny.com, but who would go to that? Nobody. I'd be like, let's look up that guy that we didn't like. <laughs> All right. But yeah, you can just check me out. It's one of them. Getting your drinks and stuff. Don't forget to tip her or tip whoever your person is. They work super hard. And they only get a few bucks an hour, you know, and all their money is like tips. And they have the same bills that you guys do. Plus the drugs and stuff. <laughs> Maybe, I don't, know. I don't know. It's none of my business. I just know what I did when I was a waiter, so I assume every other waiter on earth is like, hell yeah, drug money. <laughs> That's true, though. I would be like, cool, I made $86 tonight, so I can buy $86 worth of cocaine. <laughs> That's true. I'm better now, but I'm not making shit up. That was a fun couple of years. And I knew a guy who would sell me $86 worth of cocaine, so it was extra convenient. He'd be like, this bag's 100 right now, but I'm going to just... Now it's 86. <laughs> and I'd be like, cool, thanks. Can I go ahead and get my paycheck also? <laughs> Same dude. And that place isn't open anymore. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Everything seemed to be so great. Now, I like this time of year, man. It's almost summer. I'm excited. That's my favorite season, probably. And then winter is my least favorite. And then spring and fall are tied for second. <laughs> if we're voting for seasons. <laughs> Unless you're a ninja. If you're a ninja, then you probably love the spring and hate the fall. Because there's crunchy leaves. <laughs> Like when you would walk. Yep. That's my favorite joke because the people that get it totally get it. The people that don't get it are like, he's dumb. That's okay. Don't explain it. If you explain it, it just makes people go, oh. Well, that's dumb. I smoke pot. I, uh, yeah, it's legal in Missouri now. That's cool. Yeah. You can just be a piece of shit <laughs> legally. So that's exciting. Some places have medical marijuana, and that means that you can only smoke if you're a doctor. And I think I agree with that. <laughs> These people work hard. They deserve to smoke weed. I think about that, I've been smoking pot too long. I think about like if I could have back now all the money I've spent on pot in my whole life, God, do you know how much pot I would buy? <laughs> a bunch, probably. I think Santa Claus was a pothead. I think he was just a pothead dude who gave free shit to his friends. And they wrote about it in their diaries. And then 500 years later, I don't know when Santa was, but it doesn't matter. Like, everything about him just sounds like weed. He's just a fat dude with a beard. That's pot. 
He wears his pajamas everywhere. And that's pop. He only wants cookies. Like, I'm gonna drop some shit off, dude. Just leave me a little plate of cookies. Ho, ho, ho. What is that? It's not even a thing. I think they wrote it like that, but I think it just got lost in translation. I think that's just a pothead laugh. Ho, 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 ho. I like that joke because it'll make you laugh again at Christmas. <laughs> you guys will see a ho, ho, ho somewhere and you'll be like, hey. <laughs> oh yeah, I do have a, a t-shirt if you want to actually buy something from me. If you're watching this, you can buy it online or if you're here. I couldn't think of anything to put on a shirt so they're not like... And I have these, too. They're unrelated, but they say ninjas hate crunchy leaves. <laughs> right? All right, whatever. They're both good grocery store shirts. People will breathe out of their nose at you if you wear it to the grocery store. And they'll see you and go... <laughs> But yeah, buy a bunch of them if you want. It helps a lot. I'm not selling shirts because I'm like hoping to open a shirt store one day. <laughs> like you can still walk up to my little shirt table and be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and I'll be like, hey. <laughs> yeah, are you gonna buy a shirt? Or... Nah, you can just come up and say hi. I'll shake your hand or take a picture with you or sign your boobs or whatever. <laughs> that is a real life comedy thing that happens sometimes. Every once in a while you get to sign a boob. Of course, the negative part of that is you don't get to choose <laughs> who wants their boob to be signed, but you still have to be like, yay. <laughs> whatever you want, sir. Seems weird, but you did buy five t-shirts, so everybody knows that's the deal there. Now, I said that joke one time and a dude yelled out, he goes, how much for you to sign my friend's nutsack? And I was like, dude, that is ridiculous, a thousand dollars. That seems about right. I'm not doing anything weird. I'm not even touching it. It's just the marker that touches it. I told him he has to stretch it and make it. So come talk to me after the show. Got some credit card debt I need to take care of. I'm about 49 nut sacks in the hole right now, so... Hopefully it's a supportive audience. Now, just be safe when you leave tonight. If you're drinking, don't drink and drive, and wear your seatbelt if you do. Just be safe, that's all I'm... I like driving around. I drive all over the country doing comedy and stuff. It's awesome. I like going long distances, listening to music and podcasts and whatnot. Audiobooks. I'm a big audiobook reader. <laughs> My friends are dicks about it because I'll be like, I read a book. And they'll be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> you just listened. And I'm like, so what? You just looked. How's your sense better than my sense? <laughs> We're both getting the information of the book. The only difference is I know how to pronounce all the names correctly. <laughs> I remember when I physically read the Harry Potter books and I was like, Hermoin's my favorite. <laughs> Old wacky Hermoin. Right, and then the movie came out, and they're like, Hermione, and I'm like, that's not how you fucking say it. <laughs> There's an E at the end. 
Silent E. Hermoin. I listened to Game of Thrones audiobooks. Those were all good, but they split those up to where every chapter is a separate track, you know? And they don't say, like, chapter 2 and chapter 12. They just start talking again. So I listened to Game of Thrones for, like, five hours before I realized it was on shuffle. <laughs> That's not even a joke. That's a thing that I did. I was following along and shit. I was like, what an interesting writing style. <laughs> She's marrying him? He died. <laughs> Books are weird. I try to not look at my phone while I'm driving, but I like to watch TV and stuff. So <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? It's fine. They got those things on the side of the highway that tell you when you have to pay attention. <laughs> I'm like, this is a good episode. Brrr, all right! <laughs> I use my maps on my phone, always. Even if I already know where I'm going, I still just like to punch in the address. I just want another voice to back me up, you know? I'm like, I'm turning up here, right? <laughs> My map's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's where I thought I lived. <laughs> I wish you could change the attitude that the voice has while it talks to you. Like, make it give directions all sexual. Like, oh, just keep going straight, baby, yeah. <laughs> I'm just driving with a boner, like, hell yeah. <laughs> Or make it ask everything in questions. Like, turn left? Here? I'm just freaking out, like, man, I don't know. <laughs> or if there was a pothead version, you're driving for like an hour and your maps thing is like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you're gonna be mad, dude. No, I was supposed to tell you to turn like an hour ago. <laughs> Just go. Keep going. The world's round. We'll get there. All right, y'all. I'm done. I'm Mike Baldwin. Thank you very much. <laughs>